Hello friends. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not subscribed yet so stay updated about our new training videos. Today we are discussing a very important topic about top 10 mistakes in TIG welding. On number 1 is contamination due to poor gas coverage in TIG welding. The contamination takes if shielding gas is not turned on or there is either too little or too much gas shielding or the gas is blown away due to wind. Remedies for the TIG contamination. Check the gas cylinder to check that the right type of gas fatigue welding is being connected and used. Attempting to weld with an argon or carbon dioxide mixture gas which is used in mag welding or pure carbon dioxide gas will cause immediate contamination of the weld. Another important factor is proper gas flow rate, a flow rate of 20 to 36 cubic feet per hour CFH or 10 to 18 liter per minute LPM. I see that usually welders and mistakenly assume that a higher gas flow rate will provide better protection during welding. In fact, excessive gas flow Crosses turbulence and whirling currents that pull in unwanted floating contaminants in the surrounding air. Generally, it is good on the lower side of recommended shielding gas rates to ensure proper shielding coverage without any turbulence and the welding arc. A welder should check all the shielding gas supply fittings and hoses for any gas leaks. Any leak can pull air into the shielding gas supply which then can contaminate the weld. Also a gas leak costs huge loss in money due to costly shielding gas leakage using a soap bubble solution. Inspection of the gas supply line including fitting can help to find the leak or performing a hydro test of the supply line also helpful but then all supply will be interrupted for the inspection. Period. Any leak must be rectified to overcome the problem. Sometimes, any moisture on the gas cylinder fitting can run into the gas hence value and fitting shall be cleaned properly before fitting. On our number 2 is weld graininess. The first image on the right side shows a perfect TIG aluminum weld. Sometimes weld beads appear in grainy exterior, caused due to filler metal problems. For example, an ER5356 aluminum rod from one supplier may have different properties than an ER5356 rods from another maker. In such instances, welding engineers based on welder feedback should look for a change in filler rod manufacturer. Sometimes, a wrong filler wire for a base metal can cause a similar problem. Always before starting the weld, the welder should check that the correct type of filler metal as per WPS and clean all dirt, grease, oil and moisture from the weld joint and surrounding area to prevent contamination. The three is, weld crater or also called end craters. End craters, as shown in the figure, occurs at the end of the weld, and they often lead to cracking. Because they instantly reducing the weld, which causes the weld puddle to cool too quickly and removing the filler rod too quickly at the end of the weld. Crater also causes crater pipe as shown in the picture. It is easy to fix crater cracking issues by continuing to feed filler rod while slowly reducing current at the end of the weld. Note that some TIG welding machines feature a crater control function that automatically reduces the current at the end of the weld. Below weld shows a properly filled crater in welding. Number 4 is dirty base sand or filler metal. In welding, Pre-cleaning the base metal prior to welding is very important and every welder knows it. The picture on the right shows what happens if we don't clean the mill scale off hot rolled mild steel before welding. All base and filler metals require to be cleaned, whether the contaminant is mill scale, oxide on aluminum, dirt, or grease on filler metals. Grinding, brushing, and wiping help to remove contaminants. For aluminum cleaning, dedicate a stainless steel brush always. A properly cleaned based metal before welding should be as shown in the middle picture. Number 5 is welding aluminum in the wrong polarity or parameters adjusting the balance. This TIG weld was welded with the direct current electrode negative DCAM. As we can see, the weld can't clean the aluminum oxide layer. This created a weld with the filler metal mixed in with the partially melted oxide and produced the contaminated weld bead. Due to this reason, 
It is always best to weld aluminum with alternating current TIG only. The second picture shows a weld made with a CTG where a C allows the electrode positive cycle to clean the aluminum oxide while the electrode cycle melts the base metal. Care to be taken in TIG welding aluminum. Do not move torch at the start until the weld puddle appears like a shiny dot. This is an indication that the aluminum oxide layer has been removed and it is safe now to add filler and move forward. Adding filler to the weld zone before the oxide layer is effectively removed will result in weld contamination. Our number 6 is, lack of fusion in the root of the weld. Lack of root fusion in a groove weld or a fillet weld can be caused by a number of reasons such as 1. Improper fit up 2. Increasing arc length 3. Inadequate root gap and bevel angle in butt joints and improperly feeding the filler rod. This issue may be seen more frequently with a transformer based machine, as the arc tends to wander between the two sides of the joint as it seeks the path of least resistance. In this case, reducing arc length will provide better directional control and help increase penetration depth. It is also important not to underfill the joint or weld with high travel speed. Note that inverter based machines give more control over the arc. These controls create a narrower, more focused arc cone that provides better control over the weld puddle and deeper penetration. Number 7 is, oxidation on stainless steel. Oxidation is a very common issue while welding stainless steel without purging on the backside of a stainless steel weld. It occurs other alloys where chromium content is more than 2.25%. Also called sugaring occurs around the weld when it is exposed to oxygen in the air and hot metal reacts with oxygen. The best way to prevent oxidation is to back purge the weld with argon shielding gas or reduce welding amperage to minimize the heat input. Number 8 is, high current or amperage in aluminum welding. The picture on right shows what a weld bead looks like on aluminum welded with too high current. This produces a wider profile, an ill-defined bead, and can potentially lead to burn through. To solve this problem, Lower the amperage and or increase travel speed. Number 9 is, not keeping proper arc length control. The color change in the middle of this aluminum weld bead caused by an increase in arc length. Arc length, which is the distance between the electrode and the base metal, determines Teague welding voltage. Using too long of an arc increases overall heat input and the potential for distortion, widens the weld bead while decreasing penetration and affects weld bead appearance. Practice holding a consistent arc length to improve heat input control and improve weld bead quality. And last at number 10, is poor color on stainless. Weld here shows discoloration on a stainless steel weld caused by overheating, which not only affects a material's color but degrades its corrosion resistance and mechanical properties as well. Unfortunately, once this error is made, there is nothing that can be done to fix it except for scrapping the part and starting over. To prevent overheating, reduce amperage, slightly increase travel speed, or shorten the arc length. Using pulse welding is a good option to reduce his heat input, as it offers excellent control of the weld puddle. The second image shows the proper coloration of stainless. Hope you have enjoyed and found this video useful. Please like and comments with your feedback and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.